always have to avoid violence. Facing a second impeachment on a charge of incitement of insurrection and calls for his removal from office, President Donald Trump on Tuesday offered no apologies for his speech urging supporters to march on the U.S. Capitol and fight. We fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. And he took no responsibility for his supporters' violent invasion of the Capitol that led to the deaths of six people, including Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick. So if you read my speech, and many people have done it, and I've seen it both uh, in the papers and in the media, on television, uh, it's been analyzed, and people thought that what I said was totally appropriate. And if you look at what other people have said, politicians at a high level, about the riots during the summer, the horrible riots in Portland and Seattle and various other, other places, that was a real problem, what they said. But they've analyzed my speech and my words and my final paragraph, my final sentence, and everybody to the T thought it was totally appropriate. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Trump's disavowal of responsibility on Tuesday was his first public statement since he released a video on Thursday to condemn the violence at the Capitol and to commit to a peaceful transition of power. Several media outlets later reported that Trump regretted posting the video. Transition of power. House Democrats plan to impeach Trump on Wednesday unless he resigns or is removed by his vice president and cabinet before then, which would make him the only U.S. president ever to be impeached for a second time. With vaccinations across the country off to a painfully slow start, the Trump administration on Tuesday announced sweeping changes. The next phase has several components. The new measures include releasing millions of coronavirus vaccine doses held back for second shots and expanding the pool of people who are eligible. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. We are telling states they should open vaccinations to all people over age 60, 65 and over and all people under age 65 with a comorbidity with some form of medical documentation as defined by governors. Secretary Azar also said the administration would deploy teams to mass vaccination sites should states request assistance. Most states prioritized health care workers and nursing home staff and residents for their first vaccine deliveries, which began last month. And last week, the CDC made clear states can move on to the next priority group, people 75 and older and essential workers, without finishing that first round of inoculations. But fewer than 20 states have done so. California this week will turn the Disneyland theme park known as the happiest place on earth into a massive COVID-19 vaccination site. And in Florida, this site here, Governor Ron DeSantis, who has prioritized inoculating those 65 and older from the start, unveiled a new vaccination effort at the Villages, a sprawling retirement community. Is going to be able to handle between 800 and 1,000 uh, vaccines a day. As of Monday, nearly 9 million Americans had been given their first dose, far fewer than the 25 million total doses distributed to states by the U.S. government. The vaccinations have yet to make a dent in the health crisis. As the pandemic claimed on average about 3,200 lives nationwide each day over the last week. As many as eight gorillas at the San Diego Zoo are presumed to have contracted COVID-19 from a human handler. That's according to the zoo on Monday. They are the first known cases of natural transmission to great apes. Though for now, the zoo says none seem to be severely ill and are all expected to fully recover. Lisa Peterson is director at the zoo's safari park. They're experiencing some mild symptoms and we continue to observe them, uh, but they're drinking, they're eating and they're interacting with one another. Three of the critically endangered Western Lowland gorillas began coughing last week and fecal samples from one of them detected the virus. Peterson said they suspect the team member who passed it on to the gorillas was asymptomatic. 
that's despite all of the precautions that we take. We follow CDC guidelines, we follow San Diego County health guidelines, um, the team wears PPE around um, all of our wildlife. And so even with all those precautions, we, we still have uh, an exposure that we think happened with that team member. The zoo hasn't ruled out that other members of the gorilla troop have it too. The virus has previously been transferred to lions, tigers and a small number of pet cats and dogs. Among the first known US cases of animals testing positive was a tiger at a New York zoo. The Malayan tiger, Nadia, recovered and was reported to be eating and behaving normally. China puts nearly 5 million people under lockdown in areas around Beijing on Tuesday as new infections raise worries about a second wave in a country that has mostly contained the disease. Though the over 50 new COVID-19 cases confirmed are a small fraction of what the country saw at the height of the outbreak early last year, authorities aren't taking any chances and have introduced strict curbs whenever new instances emerge. The new numbers are half of the number reported the day before, the country's biggest daily increase in over five months. Most of the new cases that were locally transmitted on Tuesday were reported in Hebei province, surrounding Beijing. Xi Jiazhuang, Hebei's capital, has been hardest hit in the latest increase in infections and has already placed its population of 11 million under lockdown, barring people and vehicles from leaving. A district in Xi Jiazhuang is gathering more than 20,000 people living in 12 remote villages into centralized quarantine as part of the city's COVID-19 control, state media China News Service reported late Monday. Other provinces in China are reporting new confirmed or asymptomatic cases. A World Health Organization team investigating the origin of the coronavirus is due to arrive in the city of Wuhan on Thursday, where the virus emerged in late 2019, after a delay that Beijing has called a misunderstanding. Temporary morgues have been set up in some areas of Britain after local hospitals ran out of space for bodies from COVID-19 deaths. The UK has reported record levels of fatalities and new infections in the last few weeks, fueled by a new variant of the coronavirus that threatens to overwhelm the health system. In the county of Surrey, just south of London, hospital mortuaries have reached their capacity of 600, leading local authorities to set up a temporary morgue there. A spokesman for the Surrey Resilience Forum said the facilities were asked to collect bodies to, quote, avoid patients who have sadly died being left on wards, or as we have seen overseas, left in corridors. He added that there were around 170 bodies currently being kept at the Headley Court facility, formerly a Ministry of Defence site in Leatherhead. The temporary mortuary was first arranged in April during the UK's initial outbreak and has space for 845 bodies. Similar facilities have been constructed or are being constructed both in London and the southeastern county of Kent. Britain has reported more than 80,000 deaths, the fifth highest death toll globally. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Brexit is starting to bite. Unlike these bemused drivers, who had their ham sandwiches seized by Dutch border officials after arriving from Britain by ferry. Do you have meat on all the, the bread or not? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, then we take them all. I'm really? sorry. Yeah. yeah. They wouldn't even let him keep the bread in this exchange filmed by Dutch television at the Hook of Holland terminal. Welcome to the Brexit, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. They weren't the only ones. Arrivals have had tinned sardines and other foods seized since Britain left the European Union on December 31st. Under new rules that aim to stop the spread of animal diseases, travellers from outside the block are banned from bringing in meat, dairy, fruit and veg. Electric vehicle sales look set to zoom in China this year. Industry and analyst forecasts predict a rise of 30 to 40 percent for so-called new energy vehicles, or NEVs. That includes plug-in hybrids and fuel cell cars. The boom would follow tepid gains in 2020, seen at about 8 percent, when health worries kept consumers at home. Now Tesla's Model Y looks like emerging as the big disruptor. The company this month started selling locally built units of the mid-sized SUV, and it's priced them about a tenth less than comparable gasoline-powered vehicles. 
at about $52,000, the model undercuts rivals from Mercedes, Audi and BMW. All told, industry sources say Tesla is expected to make about half a million vehicles in China this year, more than three times the total in 2020. Its German rivals all have their own new models, however, potentially adding to the boom. And homegrown players are stepping up too. Local brands like Neo and Xpeng are also expanding manufacturing capacity. What happens will be closely watched. China is the world's biggest car market and accounts for about half of global EV sales. Beijing wants all new energy vehicles to account for a fifth of sales by 2025, up from 5% now. It's extended electric vehicle subsidies by two years to help hit that target. If the forecast boom materialises, that could see NEV sales hit about 1.8 million units this year.